This is the all new Vitals app on watchOS 11. And I should mention right up front that it's so new uh, that you're only gonna be able to find it if you're using the beta version of watchOS 11. And like all beta software, it's subject to change at the drop of a hat or maybe if someone in Cupertino doesn't get a full eight hours of sleep or doesn't get their nap for that particular day and just feels a little bit cranky. But with that warning out of the way, let's look at what's new in this app, what it can tell us, how it's helpful, and what currently is missing on this new Vitals app. Okay, first things first, what is this thing and why should we care about it? Well, you can think about the new Vitals app as a centralized hub for those of us who want to track some of our key health metrics measured while we're sleeping. And as of now, uh, those key metrics include your heart rate, and that's measured as the average number of times your heart beats per minute while you're sleeping. And generally speaking, we kind of want our heart rate to be pretty low while we're at rest. And then an elevated heart rate can mean an early sign of sickness, or maybe it's just your body's way of saying that it's tired. It also measures respiratory rate, which is the number of breaths taken per minute. Same thing with that, like an elevated respiratory rate might mean that your body is struggling to get enough oxygen to your body. It also measures your wrist temperature, and that's a measurement of the temperature of your skin on your wrist. And it'll show you like plus or minus compared to what it's been in the past. Uh, it'll also measure blood oxygen, which is measured by the percentage of oxygen saturation in your blood. And I actually find the fact that Apple is using this metric as one of its five key metrics kind of fascinating. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a block of time where Apple was blocked from selling the Apple Watch because of a patent infringement case dealing with this specific blood oxygen saturation sensor. Uh, later, Apple did reinstate selling the Apple Watch Ultra 2 and the Apple Watch Series 9. Uh, with this blood oxygen saturation sensor disabled. And I think it's still disabled as of now. Uh, but either way, uh, Apple is using it as one of their key metrics here, and it measures the SpO2 or the amount of oxygen in your blood. And SpO2 can be affected by a number of things uh, like asthma, uh, COPD, um, heart disease, or even being like at altitude. Uh, airplanes actually regulate the air pressure in the cabin to strike a balance between the actual altitude and something comfortable for passengers. So you're likely to see your blood oxygen saturation levels dip while you're in a flight. Now normally numbers are gonna be in that kind of 97, 98, 99% range. And if you are seeing something in like the 80s, uh, typically that's when something is wrong. And then lastly, Vitals measures the sleep duration here, which is simply the amount of total time that we're asleep. And from the sleep section of the Vitals app, you can actually link over to the actual sleep application on your watch, where you can kind of dive into things a little bit deeper, things like your sleep stages, uh, the cycles that you actually went through during sleep. Um, so that's stuff like your deep sleep, your light sleep, your REM sleep, or any time that you might have woken up throughout the night. Uh, but for any of these metrics, It'll take about a week or so for Apple to actually establish a baseline. And then after that, you'll start to see stuff like uh, within typical range. Uh, and theoretically, you'll get alerts or notifications when things are out of range. And I say theoretically because um, while traveling recently, I had quite a few bad nights. Uh, one night in particular where I really only got a few hours of sleep and I was still, I, I still never saw any sort of alert or notification. I'm guessing that uh, at least while this is in beta, Apple is is still refining, you know, what constitutes uh, abnormalities in the vital section of this application. But right away, some of you guys are probably wondering about HRV or heart rate variability, which is currently not part of this Vitals application. Now, if you're not familiar with it, uh, HRV is a commonly tracked health metric in devices like Whoop or an Aura Ring, uh, but it's also on a lot of watches 
uh, Garmin, Polar, Koros, uh, and even, yes, your Apple Watch does track your HRV. It's basically a measurement of time between heartbeats, and it's usually measured in milliseconds, and it's actually a little bit counterintuitive. When you're actually worn out from like a really hard workout, or even potentially worn out from illness or something like that, you could actually see a decrease in the variability of your heart rate, meaning that your heart rate is beating more rhythmically and it's actually trying to recover, as opposed to when you're really well rested and your body is potentially reared up and ready to go for like a super strong workout, your heart rate then might be a little bit more erratic or the variation in your heart rate will be higher. And HRV is specific to each and every one of us, so it wouldn't really be ideal for me to compare my daily numbers to uh, Ray from the DC Rainmaker channel or Des from the Des Fit channel, uh, but you can compare your numbers to a, a two to three week baseline of yourself, and you'll notice stuff like a lower HRV after a heavy night of drinking or a higher HRV after a really good night's rest. And I actually think it's a fantastic indicator for health which is kind of why I'm surprised that this is a metric that's not one of these health metrics used in the vitals application. Or I guess I should say, um, it's not being used as of the making of this video, which is in late August. I was actually stalling making this video, thinking that it might show up in one of the nightly beta builds for watchOS 11. But if you're wearing an Apple Watch, and you do want to check out your HRV, you can hop into the health app on your iPhone. I've actually just pinned that metric to the top here, uh, but you can edit what's pinned within this health application if that's something that you do want to track. Okay, sorry for the massive tangent about HRV, uh, but within the Vitals app, Right here at the end, you're gonna see your current training load, which a ton of people have been asking for and hoping to see on the Apple Watch. Now, training load is just the amount of accumulated load that your body has undergone from exercise. And it's a super cool metric to track because you don't want to increase or decrease your training load too massively in any direction. You just kind of want that steady increase to improve your fitness. And third-party apps and other brands like Garmin have been using training load and you know, and it's and they've kind of broken it into like acute load or chronic training load. Uh, think of those as like short-term training load versus like long-term training training load. Uh, but other brands have always tracked and provided numeric training load values, whereas Apple's numbers they're a little opaque as in we don't get to see them at all. Uh, we have a non-labeled chart here. Uh, in my case, you can see it dips down here over vacation, uh, but I still got some running in over this past week. Uh, I guess I shouldn't say that it's unlabeled. Uh, we do have days of the week here. Uh, we can see that I'm somewhat below my average here, uh, but the values at the bottom here can read, you know, well below your average uh, or below or steady or above or well above. So you kind of have these five values to work with from Apple. But you can also view all of your workouts and you can view them specifically by all workouts, cycling, running, walking, or all day, which I think corresponds to kind of like your move score throughout each day. Uh, but if you're wondering specifically how Apple is calculating training load, it's actually using the duration of your workout and something that's kind of new here called their effort rating. And I've changed my settings to actually request to see the effort rating after each workout. And Apple will actually automatically calculate that value for you. And they'll do that for about 17 different activity types. Don't worry, uh, swimming, biking, and running are definitely three of the 17. Those are the types of activities that I like to do. Uh, but you can also manually adjust that rating anywhere between one and 10. And Apple made this effort rating subjective on purpose, which I actually think some people are gonna find frustrating. But uh, I think doing it this way is it's kind of a nice way to uh, directly influence this training load metric based on how we're actually feeling and how we're actually doing on any sort of daily basis. 
or maybe not daily basis, but but a workout by workout basis. Anyway, uh, I actually think that this is a very good first step for Apple, and I'm really excited to see where this goes. Uh, I'd obviously love to see a little bit more detail in here, um, maybe some more specific numbers that are charted in here, uh, but I'm sure that Apple is gonna iterate on all of this over the next few watchOS versions. Uh, but what do you guys think? Have any of you guys played around with watchOS 11? What do you guys think of this stuff? There's a ton more to explore in addition to this Vitals app within watchOS 11. Uh, I really wanna make a video specifically about some of the changes that Apple has made to lap swimming. Uh, and I also tested uh, this new checkout feature that you can kind of set up for the beginning of any of your workouts. So in this case, uh, my wife gets a message when I start an activity and you know it automatically checks in and checks out when I'm done with an activity, which I think is super nice. And she loves to, she loves to keep an eye on where I'm at. Uh, but either way, uh, Vitals app or no app at all, watch OS or uh, no watch whatsoever. I really do hope that you guys are getting out there, swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.